welcome to my channel, uh, Bobo Jesse Stitches, and I'm Jesse. Yes, to everyone who is returning to my channel, I have rebranded my channel. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I put a little poll to see if people thought that the name change made sense, and ev ev everyone, everyone who voted agreed that it was a good change, and so I used to be Bobo Stitch and Quilts, so if that's who you're looking for, it's still me, I'm still Jesse, still stitching. Um, I just decided to change it to Bobo Jesse Stitches, um, so that way, um, one, you know who I am, and also I felt like it really reflected more of what this channel is, because I do almost, almost exclusively cross-stitching on this channel, and I put everything that's quilting related as a floss tube extra anyways, and so um, there won't be any kind of confusion. Um, if you would like, you can follow me on Instagram, and I'm there has Bobo underscore Jesse C., I didn't change that name. Um, I went ahead and kept that because I felt like it matched enough. Uh, but if you think they should match, let me know. Let, you know, I'm not a, you know, I'm not an expert in these things. I don't want to confuse people. So, anyway, so what's going on? What's new? Um, super short life update because there really isn't one of much for. Um, oh, welcome! If you're new, I have gotten a plethora. Is that the right word to use? I have gotten so many new subscribers um, in this last month, and it's shocking. And I want to give a shout out and thank you to Melissa at Aloha Stitches for um, shouting me out on her Instagram, and um, you know to try to get me up to um, a thousand subscribers. I still got quite a way to go, um, but I do appreciate it. But so thank you to all of my new subscribers. Welcome in, and for everyone who's returning, I'm so glad to have you back. And, uh, but yeah, so you, a little bit about me for those of you who are new to, to, to the channel. I do live in outside of Houston, Texas in the United States um, in a suburb. And so in terms of life update, there isn't much because I do live in Texas and Texas is having a super surge of um, COVID related illnesses. Um, and positivity rate is pretty high for us. And so my husband and I have gone back into hermit mode. So even though we are fully vaccinated because of the number of breakthrough cases that are happening and the fact that in Texas we don't have any kind of mask mandates or, well, anything really, <laughs> you know, um, you know, for, for our own safety, because we are a high risk house quilt, we have decided to kind of go back into hermit mode. Um, and so, so not much. We're not doing a whole lot. We, we have gone to see a couple of movies in the theater, but we're going to like the first showings on Sundays where the theater is empty and we're like one of like 10 people and each family's in their own row. Like it's really kind of, um, silly. Um, we have, we're season ticket holders for the Houston Texans. Um, last night was our, um, home preseason game. We opted not to go because they're, they're not doing any kind of COVID protocols. But we're cautiously optimistic. Um, our county judge, who's basically the mayor of the county, um, it's kind of the, 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 the title kind of is misleading to people, um, but they has announced, um, I think it was on Friday, that we're actually, as a county, up to 70% of eligible individuals who can get a vaccine are have gotten at least their first dose. And I think we're at like, near 50% for fully vaccinated. So that's good. So we're cautiously optimistic that we'll hit 70 to 75% um, vaccination, fully vaccination rate in, in a month. And then we can go to our football games without concern. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what's going on in my life. So not much. Busy at work. And um, that's it. Nothing else happening. Let's get some stitching. I'm going to do things out of order a little bit. I know that everyone is used to an order in floss tubes. Um, I'm going to do things out of order because I have two projects to show you today that are gifts. And because they are gifts, I am putting them at the end of the video. So that way the family members who they are gifts for can opt to not watch the rest of it. But I'm not sure they actually watch my videos, but just in case I put it at the end. So that way we can stop it so that they can stop it. Um, Cause I don't know of anyone who just knows me watches this, but well, let's see. So I'm going to go on backwards. I'm going to start with haul. <gasps> yeah, that's right. I'm going to start with haul. Actually, no, I'm going to start with floss tubers that I am watching. So 
I wanted to shout out three floss tubers who really don't need my help because they are superstars in their own right. Um, but the first one that I wanted to say that I've started watching who just released their second video is D's 20 Stitches. I think that everyone is aware of who they are and they are the designer, not the designer, they, um, well, is that the right word? They designed the, um, the cross stitch pattern for um, the Trans Pride Tapestry based on the artwork of Carrie um, Nagin. I think I pronounced her last name correctly. If I am incorrect, someone please tell me where I can go find it so I can pronounce it correctly. And um, you'll see that project because I did work on that a little bit in this month. And um, the, and so, but anyways, but their videos are just a shot of joy. Like, you know, there are some people you watch because they're funny and they just make you laugh and everything. And, and D videos are definitely one of those. And it's not just that they make you laugh. They, um, it's, it is, it is like a little bucket of joy and, um, and I can't help but smile. Um, and frankly, they also are able to convey their thoughts on, um, appropriation and representation in a way that is way more eloquent than I can. Um, so, so please go check them out. Their, their stitching is beautiful. It's funny. That's nerdy. And, um, uh, and there are some finishes that are just like, wow. So, so go check out D's 20 stitches. Um, uh, by the way, everyone will be linked below. Uh, the second floss tuber that is new to me, not a new floss tuber, but new to me is Daybreak Stitches. And, um, what I like about her is that, uh, like it strikes my nerdy heart a lot, not like nerdy and like geeky stitching and things like that. Uh, but their stitching when, when she is like talking about, like she goes down like research Google rabbit holes, right? Like, and it's like, well, I was curious about the name of this thing and, um, and why was it called this? And so she'll go and she'll do that. You know, it's like, it's like going down those little research holes. And, um, I definitely have done that. My husband and I will be like all the information in the world available in our phones. Let's go figure out some stuff. So it's, so I find that. Um, sweet and of course it is also really um, fantastic stitching and um, so new to me I've only watched one video um, I think she's at 11 videos and so I might actually go back and start from the beginning I typically don't do that just let you know if, I'm, if you're a new to me floss tuber I don't go back and watch your videos from the beginning like I'm always impressed at people who do that I might go find like a whip parade that you may have done um, but yeah I, I, I'm a bad fan. I don't commit that way. Sorry. So, but go check out Daybreak Stitches. Um, really enjoy her videos. And the last one I wanted to shout out is the Giddy Stitcher. And what Giddy Stitcher is a floss tube, but it's also a little bit different. And what I like about her videos is that um, she kind of talks about things that are a little bit outside the scope, um, but still within the realms of crafting. So she is a multi-crafter and does lots of different things. And so, so yeah, there is some floss tube videos, uh, but they're like the most recent one was her showing how she was experimenting, trying to create her own needle minders. And I thought that was really fun. And she is also very infectious to watch and it does make you smile. So go check out those three floss tubers. I hope that you enjoy them as much as I do. Haul. Now let's talk about the fun haul. So we're going to go backwards. Remember, I'm going to go um, haul, then I'm going to talk about my projects. Um, I did not do a regular philosophy video for the beginning of August. I ended up doing a mini whip, per well, I did a mid-year whip parade instead. And so forgive me if I have already shown this to you. I don't remember what I shared in my previous videos um, in terms of haul, but I spent some money and I wanted to share it with you. So first up, um, hopefully you can see this through the packaging is that I got the Blue Flower Halloween Parade. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the package so you can see it. And I've actually fully kitted it, so um, I just have to decide what fabric I'm gonna use. And, but, oh, still gonna be a little bit of a glare because the paper is a little glossy. Um, but I am not a 365 Halloween person, but I'm definitely like a 135 Halloween person. So. Um, Easter happens and I'm like, is it Halloween yet? So begin the countdown. So I'm looking forward to starting this one. I do plan on doing this as a new start this year. Um, and I purchased this from Top Knot Stitcher is where I got it from. 
Next up are two patterns that I got from Al Forest Embroidery. And so the first one is, um, I got the kit for Grachi. So this translates as Rooks. And so this is actually a spring pattern. Um, the, the Rooks arriving in Russia um, and the snow melting. So this is intended to be a spring pattern. So I went ahead and got the full kit and I've already unboxed it. So this is not an unboxing, but um, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Al Forest embroidery and her quits, but she dyes her own floss. And so this is the, um, the floss that comes with it. She packages it in such a lovely way. I hate to take it out, but if you're going to be able to see the, the colors, you need to have it out of the, the cellophane, right? So those are the colors that she dyes herself for it. Um, and every kit comes with a matching needle minder and a needle. So this is the matching needle minder and needle. Oops, reflection of ring light. Let's see if we can get a closer one. And then, um, and it also comes with the fabric, which in this particular case is a 32 count even weave fabric. It's just a flax linen, it looks like. So, um, very excited. Um, for those of you who don't know, I actually um, studied Russian. I have a master's in East European and Russian studies. I don't, I, I didn't study literature, I studied um, politics basically. And so I have a real soft spark for all things Russian. Um, and so really, so I'm looking forward to making this one. And then of course, because of my love for all things Russian, um, actually it's not true. I used to joke that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Russia. We, um, I haven't been back to, to Russia since 1998. So it's been a good solid 20 plus years. So I don't know what Russia is like now. Obviously when I was there, it was pretty soon within the first decade of the end of the Soviet Union. And so it's, it's very, very different now, I, I know. So, But I also purchased the Alporus Embroideries um, Happy New Year pendant pattern. So this is in Russian. It says Snowbun Godem, which is Happy New Year. Um, and I'm really looking forward to stitching this. I don't know when I'm going to do it. I've also purchased a sampler from her, um, and that's probably what I'm going to pick up for my Christmas stitching this year. But isn't that beautiful? I can't flip through the book because the patterns are in there, but I'm thinking that maybe next year I'll do like, I'll try to do like a letter, a pending a month. Let's see, how many letters is that? That's six. Oh yeah, it'd be one, of, it'd be one a month if I did one a month. Anyways, but yeah, um, if you've ever not, if you're thinking about purchasing a printed, um, a printed pattern from Alforce Embroidery. It is both in um, Russian and in English, so you can figure, and you can figure it out. Like it's, um, you know, we speak cross-stitch, right? Like you can figure it out. It's beautiful pictures in the, and it's a solid, it's a solid pattern. And like, but you can see like, it's in Russian, but on the other hand, like you can, you can figure that out, right? At least I think you can figure it out. I also am also aware that I read Russian, so that might be misleading to say that. I don't know if I showed this to y'all before, but I did purchase a Mirabilia um, for Lady Justice. This is by Nora Corbett. Um, this is my. This will be my very first Mirabilia, so I'm looking for looking forward to doing this. I don't think I don't know when I'm going to start this. This will probably be my Justice themed pattern when I finish. Um, my MLK sampler, uh, but, but isn't that beautiful? It's also, I also have that fully kitted as well, ready to go. Then I went on a spree of PDFs, like not even kidding. Um, and some of this is, I, it looks like I'm starting to run out of ink on some of my colors. So my apologies if the colors don't, don't look so great. But I start, I purchased from the Witchy Stitcher. She had her Friday the 13th sale. And so I just kind of went a little bit hog wild there. So I have first up is When Witches Go Riding. So, isn't that cute? I don't, 
I have a lot of Halloween, so I don't know if this will happen this year, but I think this will probably be a quick stitch if I actually do start it this year. I also got the two um, of her tarot card patterns. So I got the Hermit and I got Justice. This one actually might be my next Justice stitch because I think this one actually will stitch up a lot faster than the Mirabilia, obviously. And then I also purchased from Night Spirit Studio, Unexpected Visitor. My husband picked out this one. Um, Michelle Bindi was talking about how someone had stolen their artwork and, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to come support the artist. So I went and purchased the Unexpected Visitor. I think even though it is obviously a little bit of a negative theme, I think it falls into Christmas stitching or winter stitching. Don't you think? Yeah. So, um, I actually purchased this a while ago, but I don't think I ever showed it to you. So I also have Ink Circles, Alien School Girl. Really excited about this one. I'm in the process of kitting this one up as well. Last but not least, when it comes to the pattern, was that I um, purchased from the Laurel Witch this pattern of I Search for an Ancestor. And the quote says, I search for an ancestor who would have been considered a suffragette. Oh goodness, I can't, a hair, a harlot, a witches, mystics, queens, and I do my other hobby. I have two other hobbies other than cross stitching and quilting. I do my genealogy, and so I've done, and I've never really thought about it, but. I do look for, I do look for the black sheep, the unique ones, the justice fighters. I definitely look for that. My, I come from, I've always joked that I come from a long line of settlers. Like, so, so I've been able to, I can't do my mom's side of the genealogy. So I'm half Asian. My mom is um, from Thailand. I can't do the Thai genealogy. Um, but I've done my dad's side as best as I can. And, and we, I, when I'm not kidding, like a long line of settlers. So I have, I've been able to trace back um, a couple of lines to the original, um, I mean, I guess appropriately to call them the, the original migrant, but being real colonists. And so the, and, but every couple of generations, what will happen is that they will come in and they will settle and then they'll you know, they'll get the land and then the next like one or two generations after that my ancestor would pick up move a little further west and then settle Land ranch You know farm another generation will pick up move a little further west until ultimately it reached they reach Texas And so so I come from a long line of settlers and but I do look for him my dad was a little bit of an odd duck for his family and He always thought they were a little bit of an odd duck. I believe some of this stuff is ge genetic and so I look for them. I do look for them. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, this one will also be a new start this year as well. And really, really excited about that. Okay. Those are all the patterns that I purchased. I did purchase a handful of needle minders um, from the Nerdy Needle Design. So this is the, the trio. Trio, trio of Doctor Who related needle minders. Um, so that's a TARDIS. Um, a, that's in Gallifrey. And I actually don't know what that says. I should probably check that out. And that's a Dalek. And so um, we, we, we do the Who in this house. So um, that's super cute. Really happy with those. And also I purchased an album cover of Look What the Cat Dragged In from Poison. <laughs> I am a child of the 80s. I am a child of hair bands of the 80s. And Poison is my favorite band. And I have seen them in concert over 10 times. Love Poison. Look what the cat dragged in. It's always how they start their show. Always. First song ever. Always. Every every concert. Every tour. So, um, so this one made me super excited. All right. More haul. I did. I did a lot of shopping, y'all. I got a problem. Um... 
I'm in three Fabric of the Month clubs. I am planning on getting rid of one of those in 22, um, but I kept everything for this year because I was able to join two this year um, over the course of the year. So um, I belong to Color and Cotton, and so this is August, August Color, which is Oak Meal. Um, I can't find the July Color. It's somewhere in my house, so sorry for not being able to show you Julys, but here's a nice neutral Oak Meal. Um, Actually, I think this might be the fabric I can use for Halloween Parade. What do you think? Yeah. And then I also belong to Fiberlicious Yummy Co's Fabric of the Month Club. And this was July's, which is aloe from the other side. This lovely green. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> and then August was Cherry Rific. Look at that lovely reddish color. I love that. And for Five Alicious, I also get a 32 count Lugana um, as well. I, I get Lugana because that's what I can get into because it's almost impossible to get into a linen fiber, a month of fabric of the month club. And then the, the two that I get from Rogue Stitching, this is Storm from Crosswing Collection. So they don't, they do a variety of different, so this is a nice sky kind of color. I was thinking about this for possibly for searching for my ancestors, but I'd have a different one in my stash that I might use. And then, oh my gosh, y'all, look at this one. This is called Pumpkin King by Atomic um, Ranch Fabrics. Look at this. Oh, the light's washing that out a little bit. Here, let me see if I can if I warm up. Does the warm, warmer color change it? Experimenting with light while we're doing this. Ah, this is much better. Ah, it's just beautiful. This is beautiful orange with specks of dark. Ah, love it. Eee. Ah. Went too far. It went too far. <laughs> just real in this household. Okay. All right. And then I purchased some project bags. That is true. So, because you know, I am a bit of a 805 stitcher addict, so I've got two more bags from her. This is, look at this gnome. Look at this gnome. And the inside of snails. All right, isn't that great? And then I also purchased this one, which is like little portraits. And they are like, some of them are right side up, some of them are upside down, of little animals. And then the inside of that one is like this, I guess, little pebbly looking kind of thing. So that's the 805 Stitcher bags. And one of my favorite literary characters ever that ever existed in my mind is Anne Shirley from Anna Green Gables and the Anna Green Gables series. Um, she is the first character that I read has a kid that I was so heartbroken to learn that she didn't exist, like she was a fictional character. And I always just felt like Anne Shirley should have been real. And I follow Crickle, Crickle Wood Creeks, and she had posted on Instagram that she had one of these bags of rent remaining. So I got one of her Anna Green Gables bags. So it's oh, so Anne. Oops, over here. Anne is embroidered in the fabric, and then of course that's the back fabric there. It's solid, like it's, a, I mean, in order to be able to do the embroidery, there has to be some interfacing. So you can see the thickness of the, of the project bag. So I love it. I've decided that all of my Stitching Book Club projects are gonna live in the Anna Green Gables bag. And I believe that, yes, that's all of the haul that I have to share with everyone. And so with the haul, I'm gonna pause and say, Again, I have gotten so many subscribers, like I'm shocked by it. Before August, I had just under 300 subscribers, and I was already planning something for 300 subscribers. And as of yesterday, I was at 404. I got over 100 new subscribers in a month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't believe it. Um, it's, it's shocking to me, absolutely shocking. So I do wanna get say a thank you. I have been planning a 300 um, giveaway and um, and now I had to spontaneously think of a 400 giveaway um, as a thank you and appreciation for, for
for the fact that y'all want to spend some time with me. I know there's a lot of floss tubers out there and they make, there's so many and they're so fantastic. I don't know how anyone chooses. Um, I have a hard time choosing. And um, so I do appreciate everyone who does stop by and hang out with me for a little bit. So my 300 subscriber giveaway is because I love it so much, I am giving away a pattern from the Laurel Witch by Laura Dobb. I had reached out to her and to let her know I had reached a milestone and wanted to do a giveaway for her um, for one of her patterns. Just trying to figure out the logistics of it because all of her patterns are only in PDF. And because um, I, I wanted to be able to do something where I could actually send it to the person without running afoul of any copyright and making sure that no one felt like I was doing anything untoward. And she has graciously, amazingly offered um, a pattern for me to give away to, to one of you. And so, um, so thank you. Thank you to Laura. Um, I'm going to admit fully, I'm very selfish. I really want to sal. I want to sal with someone on the Laurel Witch. So, um, but that being said, all of her information and her website is down below. Go check out her website. Go look at all of these amazing different cross stitch patterns that she has for her. It's her own artwork. So it's her artwork that she is designing the patterns for. And, um, and tell me which one your favorite pattern is. And, um, and the, you know, the, and the, the giveaway is, is that, um, we're going to be sending you a PDF pattern of your choice. And, um, so in the comments, let me know which one is your favorite pattern. The keyword I'm going to be searching for is which W I T C H. So be sure you include that in the comment. And, and when I use the Google, not the Google, the YouTube random comment picker, that's the word I'm going to look for is which. And, uh, but tell me which pattern you would want. And, um, and hopefully if, if you don't win, you'll go ahead and get the pattern and let's have a sal. I don't, like a Laurel Witch Sal. Should we just call it that? The Laurel Witch Sal? Um, I'm just really excited. I'm planning, again, I'm going to start this probably in October. So, so go, go pick one out and let me know. The rules of giveaways are the same as every other floss tuber. Please don't use the word giveaway. If you do, I have to delete the comment. You do need to be over the age of 18 because I need to be able to ask for your email address and email something to you. So, uh, so, so be sure you can get an email. <laughs> so, so that will be the kicker on that one. So that's my thank you for um, the 300, uh, my 300 subscribers. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do for 400 subscribers? Let's be real. I like to support people and, and, and elevate people that I think their products are really great. So for my second giveaway as a thank you for my 400 subscribers, I am going to do a giveaway for one of the nerdy um, needle design codes. So what I would like you to do for this one is you have a couple of options. If you want one of these, you can tell me which one you want. But go and check out her website. Her Etsy store is below. Let me know which one is your favorite needle minder. And, um, and then what I will do is that I will go ahead and purchase that needle minder and send it off to the, to the winner of that giveaway. Um, I'm hoping to be able to coordinate with her so that she sends it directly straight to you as opposed to sending it to me and then me mailing it on. But if we have to do that, we'll figure it all out. Um, but tell me which one is your favorite needle minder and the, the, and the keyword that I'm going to look for on that one is nerdy, N-E-R-D-Y. So that's going to be the code word for um for nerdy and so just tell me which one's your favorite needle minder which one would you would you get would you also get a poison cover she's got some book covers um it's pretty awesome are you a nerdy stitcher would you get a nerdy needle minder so that's going to be my thank you for 400 subscribers so um so thank you so much and again same with the laurel which um, giveaway. Please don't use the word giveaway. Be over the age of 18. And for that one, you will have to be able to give me your mailing address. Um, and obviously for the email one, the PDF, I just need to have an email. I don't care where you live in the world. We can do that. Um, I think I can be able to send you the needle minder anywhere in the world too. So let's just open it up to anybody. I don't want anyone to feel like they can't get something just because I got to mail it to you um, out of the country. It just may take a while for it to get there. I'll do that. Yeah. No geographical restrictions for this giveaway. All right. Okay. Where are we in time now? 30 minutes in. Let's talk about what I did in stitching. <laughs> All right. Well, 
we had some technical difficulties. So, so there might have been like a little bit of a transition there. Not there, not likely. There is a little bit of a transition there. Um, I accidentally stopped recording after I talked about the giveaways. So, um, so now here we are in the stitching part. Um, I do have a little guess here. So, say hi to Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Say hi. Here. This is here. Hi, the girl. Um, she wants to be in the video right now. Um, it might be because it's dinner time and she's trying to convince me it's time to eat, although it's really not dinner time yet. But um, anyways, so let's get into the stitching part now. I have four projects to share with everyone. And so I have two finishes and two whips. And so let's start with the finish. Um, so in my last video, I gave you a big fat lie, which is I told you that I was done with the Little Women's Sal. Um, I was not, but now today for real, it is finished. So here we are. So here is my Little Women. So this is by the Stitching Book Club, which is the Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. I stitched this on 32 Count Lugana. This is Vellum by Picture This Plus. I used the Called For DMC 2 over 2. And I made no conversions or modifications of any kind. I love this. I think the colors are beautiful and bright. Um, and I'll definitely get it framed up and we'll just start adding it to my collection of stitching related or book related stitches and we'll put it into our little library that we have here in the house but I love it um, these are well designed patterns the house took forever but I'm looking forward to the next one which is the Great Gatsby so here we are so excited about that one if there's a fifth part don't tell me because I think it's done now so, so there's that one. Next is my whip uh, that I can show you right now. And I am working on, has already mentioned earlier today, the Trans Pride Tapestry. This is what it will look like when it is done. And I am working in here is where I am. I have finished the outline of the unicorn. And so... This is on 16 Count Ada. This is Hue by Fortnite Fabrics. Um, this was part of the um, rainbow stitching box from the Black Needle Society and its monthly subscription or bi-monthly subscription box. So it's exclusive to them, but I thought this was the perfect fabric, so I went ahead and picked it. Um, right now, my goal for the 2021 for the Trans Pride Tapestry is to finish the unicorn um, as you saw in the full in, in the final one there is some items to the on the side of it and the fabric is not quite big enough um, when I counted it out if I stitch the full design has has um, has designed it will go all the way up to the edges and so depending on how I choose to fully finish it it may not be enough fabric on the edge so I'm going to think about how I want to fully finish it. But for right now, the goal will be to finish the unicorn just of its own. Um, and we'll go from there. This will probably end up being my football piece. Um, when I take stitching to the games, I do try to take something that doesn't require me to think too much, do too much counting, just kind of fill in the, the color type of thing. And... And this one will definitely have a lot of color block filling in, especially the unicorn. So probably what I'll do is um, I will probably do, you know, maybe do that 25-7 on this and fill in a color that isn't the, the like, if there's not something where I know for a fact, oh, this whole thing is going to be one color or something, then I'll fill in the, those pots so that I can fill in the blanks and the... Um, Fill in the lines, so to speak, color it in. So those are my two stitches that I can show everybody. Now I'm going to stop and say, if you are related to me, you may want to consider stopping the video at this point in time because my last two things I have to show you are gifts. So if you are related to me by blood or marriage and you don't want to be spoiled by gifts so that I may be making to people, you should stop right now. And, um, but if you don't care, then keep going. But I do hope you want it to be a surprise. I actually don't know how many people, 
if my family watches this, but just in case. So last chance, last chance, last chance. All right, for those of you who are still with me, I am assuming that you're not related to me or you don't mind being spoiled. So I am also currently working on Seize the Day by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And this is where I got to. And so for those of you who have watched this before, so where I did since you last saw it, I filled in the book, the sunglasses, the flip flops, umbrella, beach bag, and then on the other side I did the kite, I finished that sand dune, the sun and clouds, the ice cream cone, and the conch shell. So that's what I've done. When I did, oh, and I am doing this on um, 32 count um, Belfast linen sandstone by color and cotton and doing this two over two with the called for um, DMC. The only modification I have made is um, obviously the name in the banner for the beach. And my expectation is, is that when I counted everything out, there was about 35 or so remaining motifs in in the pattern. And so I thought what I would do is I do a motif a day is kind of what my thought was. Um, and that should put me about mid-October finishing it all up, which is more than enough time to get it framed for the holidays. Last but not least is a finish that I'm very, very proud of. And this is the Sing a Song Sampler. And here we are. Look at that. I'm so so proud of that. So I'll go ahead and do a little um, drive by here on close up so you can see what I did. So this is obviously I did it in a full row. I stitched this using um, various flosses from Weeks Dye Works, Gas, the General Arts, and um, DMC. And I'm doing this, I did this on 36 count Edinburgh Linen Heartland by Picture This Plus 2 over 2. And the inspiration is from Jennifer Drinka and Jan Hicks. It was their color conversion. I also followed, as best as I could, Jennifer's conversion of the runner into Maria. And, um, but otherwise, not everything got converted. Some of these are the original colorful colors in, in, the, um, in the designs. Um, and the pattern is a single sampler by Silver Creek Samplers. And it is four different patterns that you do have to purchase, by the way. So it's not all in one pattern. So it's each, each pattern has two of the um, notes. And so that's where we are. Um, if you are interested in what I did, some of it is converted, some of it isn't. I do have all those notes written down. Just send me a note on Instagram. I'm happy to share. But again, most of it was inspired by Jan Hicks, although it's not exactly the same conversion that she and Jennifer did. Um, I did do a couple of other things um, that were a little bit different. And I think in total, there is, um, I think, 12 colors in total that I used in the whole in the whole piece. So, um that's it. That's what I got in terms of what I stitched in August. I did not write down all of my stats. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I usually do a year, uh, a month in recap of everything I did. So um, check me out on Instagram, Jesse C, um, Bubba underscore Jesse C, and you know, and then you can see what my stats are for um, each month for stitching. So what is my plans for September? I think I joked in my whip that I thought about doing Sailor September, which is the focus on my two Sailor Moon um, themed um, pieces. And I think I'm gonna do that. So uh, the, so Whip Go for, uh, for September has already been called. And the two projects that were called for that for September were No Face Knitting, and thank you to everybody who commented on my Whip Parade. I have decided to UFO no face knitting, so that has now gone into timeout. Um, whether or not I'll restart it on a different fabric, I don't know, but for right now, it is officially UFO'd. So obviously, I'm not gonna work on no face knitting for September, and then the second one that was called was 
the Halloween sampler by Mary Inglebright. I've already finished that and so that's done. I've already made that happen. So what I'm going to be doing is um, focusing on Sailor Moon Squad and the Lunar Princess Sal. And I'm going to actually do a separate floss tube extra video about it because this is going to be my um, Sailor Moon Squad. It's going to be my challenge piece for the Stitching for a Cause Marathon that's being hosted by Michelle Bindi, Aaron at Two Martini Stitchers, and Resist Stitch. And uh, so that's going to be in a separate video to kind of talk about what that means and, um, you know, for anybody who's not aware. So keep an eye out for that. I don't know if it's going to post at the same time as this video, um, but that's what I'll be working on. And so the goal is 100, 100 hours into Sailor Moon Squad. And in addition, in that, it's also my, uh, my claim piece for Magical Stitches for my full coverage piece. So I need to get in 7,000 stitches into that. Because it's September, almost, I should probably work on that and get that goal done. And um, so those are the only two things I got planned. I will continue to work on Seize the Day. And after that, it's just going to be what I always do. Stitch what I want when I want. And whatever strikes my fancy. Maybe I'll start Ancestors. Maybe I'll start um, the Halloween Parade. I don't know. We'll see what strikes my fancy. But probably for the next week or two, I'm going to be focused on um, Sailor Moon Squad. Kind of get my brain working on that. Okay? That's it. That's all I got for you. Um, I hope wherever you are, you're doing okay and having a stitching good time. And stay safe if you're any place where there's some, uh, you know, some outbreaks. Um, I am in Texas. I'm very mindful that as I'm recording this, that... Our neighbors to the east of us um, in Louisiana and Mississippi are um, having Hurricane Ida make landfall. And so my heart is and my thoughts are very much with, with those individuals um, who are writing it out. And hopefully everyone is safe and healthy. And, you know, property damage is property damage. Be sure you reach out to your local legal aid organization if you need assistance. There is help. Um, for FEMA assistance, if you're running into any legal issues preventing you from getting the help that you need. Um, and of course, if you have any other issues on that front. So, all right. With that, I hope everyone's doing good. And I'll see you in about a month. Don't forget about the giveaways. Remember, don't say the word giveaway. Otherwise, I have to delete you. I will um, close the giveaways um, when I film the next video. So in about a month, let's say about September 30th. It's probably when I'm going to film. All right. So I, well, actually, let me just go ahead and give you a date. Let's see. I got a, I got a calendar. Let's see. Um, what will be the date that I will be filming my next video? This is good content. Let's find a calendar. Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, let's 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 call it that September 30th is when the comments are going to be done because I'll probably end up recording either on October 1st or 2nd. Okay. All right. Well, take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.